asked about that, uh, about that fight in a second. But I have to ask you, um, today I actually uh, actually talked to your trainer, Crazy Bob Cook, who's the head trainer over there, and, uh, AKA, and he just told me, I asked him for, for some something on you, and he just said, ask him about when he used to live inside of a warehouse, uh. <laughs> and he super glued someone's eyes shut. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and he said, that's all you need to ask. And he said, he said, keep trying him until he tells the story. <laughs> and he said that he really did do this too. He's expecting, yeah, he's expecting the story. All right, I feel really bad. I tell you guys this. It's horrible. Don't think less of me. Okay, it was a really, really drunk night. <laughs> <laughs> so they used to have these, what were they called? Um, it was like a, what do they call those? Tech, what is the techno? Oh, God, what is it? In San Francisco, it's like an like an all, like a two. Rave. Rave. Yeah, yeah, it's a rave. It's a rave. But it was like... No, was, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, so we were all fucked up. <clears throat> so we came back from there at like 5 in the morning. A couple of the guys that were training, Ruth Crunkleton and Pat Minahan were training with us. <laughs> and they were, we, I used to live in a warehouse with Bob when I first started fighting because times were tough. Bob was my manager at the time, still is my manager. <clears throat> so Bob would go home with Fresno on the weekends. He'd stay with me during the week. We lived in a warehouse. We were living like in this little loft area above a warehouse area. And so, um, you know, we've come a long way, I think, since then. And, uh, and so we had two fighters that were in from out of town that were staying with us. <clears throat> well, they came back from partying all night, too, from a different place. And uh, they had went to the 7-Eleven. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. <laughs> so, we, uh, so, yeah, so um, I was hanging out with this girl. And we were obviously having sex. And we got, so like the door had knocked and it was them. It was pouring outside, it was raining, whatever. So I was just like laying there naked and when she came, or when they came to the, when they came to the door. <laughs> uh, when they came to the door, I, obviously I just jumped out of bed. I was trying to figure out who it was because I completely didn't realize that they were going to be in town that weekend. So they came to the door and I opened the door and I was still naked answering the door. And they're like, oh my cock. And so, uh, so then uh, we walked into the kitchen, which was like a kitchen slash shower slash like where they kept the tools. <laughs> so, so we were there, and they're trying not to like look at me. I'm having like a full blown conversation with them, not realizing that I'm still naked. And um, so Pat is like sitting on the shower. He's like, there's a step that goes into the shower. Pat's sitting there like this. He's like, oh my god, oh my god. And so Cleet, if anyone's met Cleet, <clears throat> Rich Crumpleton, he's like Mr. Conversation. He's like, God damn, can I touch that? Like, he's like <laughs> trying to, he's really trying to like, hey, you know, and I'm like, get away from me. And I'm, I'm still like in this conversation. And so Pat won't pay attention, so I think it's going to be funny. I'm like, hey, so Rich and I were talking to him. We're like, hey, how about this? So we're talking back and forth. Go ahead, go get him. Go ahead. So I tap on Pat's shoulder just like this. So Pat's got his head down. So Pat's got his head down, and I go, hey, Pat. And he lifts up his head, and I go, oh. <laughs> So. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, yeah, Josh. And he's like, look. Well, anyways, so, you ever heard that, like, that dribble before you shoot comment, you know? The little, guys come. So anyways, there was still a little bit left on there, like, kind of. <laughs> Crazy Bob, because he, he left out that part of the story. Yeah. No, we call him Crazy Bob because he would drive to and from Fresno like every night to train. Because of the canister with the super glue was your Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, really, that's the that's the story. So after that, Pat uh, moved out. <laughs> and uh, Rich stayed. So <laughs> he was like, oh, I want to get super glue. <laughs> this is bullshit. All right, man. And you're also, you know what's really funny? I have this thing where anytime, like, um, anytime you find a ways in, they always drink right when they weigh in. They always drink like pee like. Yeah. Like I've seen you chug it, and it's so goofy seeing these big like physical specimens drinking this little baby juice out <laughs> of a little plastic container. So um, I have a special present for you. I gave you something. And this is my friend Daniel Costa, everybody. Keep it going for Danny. Daniel helped out a lot with this. Magazine. 
So, I, so this this I made for you. You, you can take this to the weigh-in. Your special forty ounce. Anyway. So, I'm gonna drink it out of a little uh, plastic container. So that's for you to have. So you this can have that. This is how I'm going. <laughs> I was trying to cut weight, dude. <laughs> All right, hey man, thanks a lot, dude. It's been a, a, a pleasure having you.